Welcome to the Off the Road Again podcast. I'm Chris. I'm Ross. I'm Sedona. And I'm Lynn. See, and no, no one messed up. That was perfect. That was Amazing great. job. Thank you so much. Uh, this is our podcast about anything and everything off-road. Uh, rally cars are going to have to wait. Yeah. Somebody hasn't got back to me. Um, hint, hint, we can name, nudge, nudge. I don't know if he listens to the show because I don't think he has enough time in his day, but not. he needs to return my email. So as always, we're still socially distanced. We did it. It's the only way we've ever been able to do the show. Like it's, I'm in Kansas City, Ross is in Connecticut, Lynn's in California, and Sedona's in Arizona. So doesn't matter what the like local- maybe we don't have like the budget for that. <laughs> <laughs> so the- Quarantine Ross, we, Well, we don't have a budget, so. <laughs> yeah, like they're, like the budget is me on, uh, Ross paid for stickers and I bought like Photoshop and Premiere and Zoom. That's it. Like, <laughs> the, the other thing, Lynn, I, I don't think Lynn knows this, Ross. Uh, Ross and I have never physically been in the same place at the same time. Mm -hmm. You guys have never like met? Nope. <laughs> and you guys, how long have you been doing this podcast? This is, I uh, think this over is over a year and a half. 80, <laughs> this is 87, awesome. I think 86 or 87, something like that. Yeah. Things kind of got all sorts of messed up last Impressive. year. We, we had multiple trips where we were possibly going to be in the same place at the same time. That all got wiped out last year. And so, and Maybe then you guys are the same guy, like Clark Kent and Superman. <laughs> we do both wear glasses. <laughs> yeah, seriously. <laughs> Dark hair, beard, glasses, yeah. checks out. Definitely Superman. It, it didn't Guaranteed. work when I had like 10 inches of hair oh, no, behind no, no, it. No, no, no. So Remember, that was... That's a wig, man. That's easy. <laughs> it, it also wouldn't work if we like... It, you know looked at where the seat is in the same car for the two of us because i'm yeah, like yeah and you have to be all the way out <laughs> ross is normal height and i'm yeah. six four so that's like lynn and i <laughs> right sedona's normal and i'm super like peewee says see that it's the same thing i think that when you guys first get together you need to have all of your guests present at the same time so it's almost like an off the road again podcast Meeting, reunion. Reunion. Not even a reunion <laughs> it's just a union it's just the, the yeah. initial union. <laughs> Civil union okay well oh. check your email <laughs> yeah. 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 that's right we, we we do have a plan in place for it, it is very tentative we do and it involves somebody who was already mentioned on the show right or at least hinted at. Hinted at, yeah. <laughs> Can you guys hear the dog in the bone again? Okay, no. so I'm gonna keep going then. Maybe now that you pointed it out, yeah, I could. You know, it's like, hey, do you guys see this zit I have? Well, yeah, now <laughs> right. Now I do. <laughs> like he he'll sit here all day, sleep all day. As soon as we start recording, grabs a bone every night. I'm like, yeah. what? That what is routine. Doing? My dog already tried to get my lap, so. Good. See, that's good. Let the dog in a lap. We're good. Yes. That's a family show. Well, that, <laughs> that adds production value, Sedona. I mean, he is worth millions. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Don't do that. Someone's going to steal your dog now. Like, yeah. I know. <laughs> dog is very, it's a pound puppy. It is worth nothing. It's worth nothing. Yeah. Just millions to your soul. Yes. yes. The family. The family puppy. So the industry news is that Honda wants to have their a TRD of their own. But not really a TRD, more but, like an in-between TRD and Subaru wilderness of their own. Wouldn't that be weird if they called it the Honda TRD? <laughs> well, like the Honda TRD. Trail sports, kind of close. Like, yeah, really. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Honda but it's TRD Pro 4 wilderness. <laughs> <laughs> Just mix all of the industry. Yeah, yeah. Those. Oh, yeah. Throw a jump no, one will, no one will notice. Where did I? I saw a license, a vanity plate the other day, and it was on a forerunner, and it was supposed to say TRD family, but it read as turd family. Turd family. Yeah. yeah. That's how was I that, read it. <laughs> was that in the Hooniver Slack or was that a different one? Uh, I don't know. Okay, that so that was in a different one. Us. <laughs> I yeah, might have too many slacks. I'm There's pretty, a lot pretty going sure on. that they've, they've heard all the turd, all the turd jokes. Probably. Yeah, and still, yeah. they've yeah. not done anything about it. So, because no. Toyota was racing it on a TRD, like, was it on something that was worthy of TRD? It was a forerunner. Was it actually, a pro. Oh, okay. I think Probably. it might have just been TRD off road. Uh, okay, close enough. Save five grand. You know, more than that. Is it more than that now? Well, yeah. Okay, I it's like it between like a base TRD and a pro is like ten grand now. It's crazy. Love. Actually, might be. Might be 11 or 12. 
like well, I will say, anyways. I mean, I, you know, I'm as far as like everybody kind of judging up their their gear toward like the off-road set like i'm all for it i mean i love what subaru did with that wilderness i think you know if it encourages people or if people think hey like this is you know maybe it's just like lifestyle-y stuff for them that's fine because honestly it's at least encouraging people to that end and mm -hmm. it's such a beautiful country there's so much to see here and so much to do and yeah let's you know rugged it up definitely yeah. And we've seen the Hondas out there um, in the desert and it's, they're really capable. So just to make it a little extra mm -hmm. and I think it's like a uh, skid plate and things like that. So make it actually easier to go out. I love it. Yep. Yeah, hundred percent. That passport. Yeah. I mean, right. that's as close yeah. to me. That, that all wheel drive system is as close as you can get to a, a locker. Okay. As as hmm. I, I found uh, I we'll have to look into that. I can't passport. say I've actually seen them on or in a trail scenario, but yeah, we the pas did. passport's so, great. Yeah. Such See, a I think, good oh, thing. so that's the passport, like all dude it up, huh? See, I, I don't know think, if it actually no, has the package yet. I think that's, that's just a just regular a, passport. That's a normal that's one. That's a regular <laughs> yeah. passport. That's what it looks like. But I think <sighs> the press like release was thing. just like, here's our logo and idea. Oh, it's coming. It's coming. Yeah. I mean, so. listen, for a vehicle, I think this is a smart move because, so they did the first drive of this. I don't know if either one of you guys were on it in Moab. Ooh. And that's like a pretty, you know, it's pretty formidable driving. And um, I may or may not have gone um, a little bit rogue and taken it on a path like I shouldn't have gone on. Um, but you know what? It made it and it was did great. So... <laughs> Is, and that was in the passport? Yeah, super capable little car. It's got the same, um, it's got that same off-road, you know, sort of, uh, sorry, torque vectoring all-wheel drive system that the pilot does, but the dimensions on this make it so much mm -hmm. better. Well, it's because it, it has none of the rear overhang, right? Like it's- Exactly, yeah. they just whacked six inches off six, the right. So, so yeah. let's see. The only thing I wish they would do is bring like, cause to me, like the Honda passport was like the body on frame Zuzu rodeos from like the late nineties. Like I do that. I know, but I want them to like, just bring a Zuzu back and then make rodeos again. <laughs> and an Amigo. Days, those days are over. Yeah. Even if they brought no. the Zuzu back, it all, it would all be <laughs> unibody. Yep. And I mean, yeah. I mean, listen, it, in a lot of ways, it's great. You guys, have you guys been in the new Defender? Uh, no, I have one. Wait, I don't know who you're. Are you I'm pointing, pointing at you. It's on oh, my pointing screen. At me. Oh, like, for the recording, know. it works. Uh, for the Just ignore <laughs> me. <laughs> I have one coming in like three weeks. You're going to find that it's ridiculously stupidly capable and that's body on frame. I mean, I, I mean it's, it's unibody. Unibody. Now. Yeah. unibody. So much more flex. Like, so, I mean, it's just, that is the way of the future. I do have to find a way to take it on a trail. Oh my planning, God. Planning oh, yeah. Yeah. Love it. I'm planning to toe with it, not to like. I remember <laughs> Connecticut, guys. Connecticut, Connecticut. not yeah. a lot. <laughs> yeah, it's like three hours to the closest park. So, okay. make the drive. Do make it. Make the drive. <laughs> yeah, maybe I will. Okay. Anyways, so, uh, yeah. So, Honda tra Trail Sport, right? I actually have Trail to look Sport. To <laughs> you wrote the that note. It was called that. I know, but there. It's like it's all jumble at this point. It's you know, um, yeah. No, it, it'll be good. It'll be a really good addition, especially to you know, the bridge line. And I think my lights just turned on by themselves over me. Um, but yeah, no, it, it'll be a really, really good addition, yes. especially because that HPD pack that's on the ridge line now is nothing, like literally nothing. It's, it's so bad. So the only thing the ridge line and the Nissan Frontier share in common is they both have cutouts of their fender flares for their gas caps. They also, I mean- Every time. H because it's the dumbest thing ever. You spend millions of dollars to design a vehicle and you can't add enough clearance that the fender can't go buy the gas cap. Potato, potato. Right? There's, another, <laughs> well, there's another really bad three letter acronym that people, I mean, all the time hear HPV instead of HPV. Oh, Jesus. That's like that's, the. That's I'm bad. just saying, I mean, it's good, <laughs> like listening to a video, and I was like, what did you just say? It's the friends joke where Joey's the VD guy. Uh, like, it's that. What? <laughs> Ross, that one might be a little too old for you. Yeah. 
couple of years. <laughs> Anyways, um, moving on. So, so we caught, yeah. Last week we shared renders. This week we have actual press photos. Yeah. The Forester Wilderness now exists. And I think it's awesome. Yes. <laughs> it's the surprising next step in the wilderness line. I was actually really expecting Cross Trek before this. Yeah, me too. What is your opinion, you guys, of the just the this sort of like the soft I feel like the, the body cladding is like excessive. It's I'm, not ma it's not CX30 excessive, like mm. whoa, it's half of the thing. It's but not an avalanche. I think yeah, the avalanche was great. What was that to do? I have no, I it's not an avalanche, that's for sure. <laughs> avalanche is better. <laughs> the no, cladding? But the cladding in it though? Oh yeah, you could bounce stuff off it all day. Ross owned an avalanche. So I owned an avalanche for eight years, so it's <laughs> yeah, sore subject. Oh, <laughs> that thing's still kicking. Anyways, but yeah, it's you know, because there's like that little notch. You see, there's like a couple little notches, like one that's on, kind of up in the top, the top right hand side of it on the front and the back. But like, what's that for? Like, I just don't see. Yeah, you, on the wheel, I, on the wheels. It just is like kind of like a funky design to me. And it's, it's exactly that. that bothers me. But no, your point that it's a funky design. And if the yeah. point of all of this cladding is to protect the body and protect the paint, then shouldn't it like Cover. extend diet, yeah. like flat across, you know, the rocker <laughs> instead of kind of being like, so yeah. you do. It's a good point. I mean, maybe they know something we don't about like the trajectory of rock kickback. <laughs> And it, it just doesn't hit the area where it seems most likely to hit. Right. <laughs> also, I feel like it would just be cheaper probably to carry the design all the way across and not have a cutout. Yeah. But, <laughs> Who knows? but then we'd all be complaining like it's not very designy. Yeah. <laughs> There's nothing fancy about what it. What would we talk about on the podcast? Cladding. Yeah, Boom. Right? How would uh, our amateur design critique make its way onto the airwaves? <laughs> <laughs> uh, see that? Maybe that's in the wild that looks a little better dirty yeah i mean yeah i think it looked great like like a charcoal gray or a black i think that blue obviously they wanted to accentuate the the cladding a little bit mm -hmm. um but I, you know it's just kind of like oddly cut out is the blue a special like is is it a special wilderness blue that they're doing like do we know that like how ford had was that nitro blue that was on all the nitro RS? and performance yeah yeah I don't know. I don't know. It's a good question. It's good blue. I saw one in, you know, on the highway a couple of weeks back. Good color. I've seen one in red and I really liked that too. Ooh, that could be good. Right. It was a good pop. Now they just need to put the STI engine in the cross track and do a cross track STI wilderness. Hold your breath, Rob. Yeah. <laughs> that, that will be $200,000. <laughs> Yeah, because you're paying to have someone put it in for you. Exactly. <laughs> right. <laughs> hey, Dave. <laughs> that was a Texas Dave joke. He does that stuff. Anyways. Oh, that's he does. Not, yeah. I mean, it sounds fun. Yeah. So anyways, moving on. I just wanted to throw this one out there because it absolutely blew my mind. So there's a new Colorado company called, I, I guess it's pronounced Rindev, R-I-N-D-E-V. And they announced recently that they're going to be making an electric side-by-side it's a big number it's thirty thousand dollars twenty nine nine ninety nine but i mean you can hit that you can hit that with a you know a polaris razor or can nope. mx3 Easily. the wilderness Easily. edition start in the 30s for they, subaru the wilderness outback's like 37 i mean, so, I mean like that's an entire this is like, a, this is yeah, like but, a utility side by side though right not a so well the unity so it, it's called unity which weird name but it's they haven't really told us what it is. It's probably going to be more geared towards the sport side of things to compete with, you know, the big like turbo razors. But so here's the specs. They're crazy. So 507 horsepower, 812 pound feet of torque, 21 inches of suspension travel front and rear. I'm it can tow 3,000 pounds. Of these it has H full HVAC and it can go 350 miles on a truck. No, I'm already afraid of these people. I just, these things are going to be in orbit. <laughs> I don't think they're going to exist. This feels like a Tesla-styled yeah. no. uh, 
hey, these are amazing statistics. Please place reservations. We might get this to you in five to never years. Uh, there's God, no I proof of concept. Dead. I, I genuinely <laughs> hope I'm dead when this comes out. Because yeah. the people that are going to buy that are not like necessarily it's like. Going to come with a case of beer. Yeah. <laughs> two, two cases. It's going to be Natty Light. <laughs> like Natty Light. Yeah. And, a, and, yeah. a bottle, PBR and a, a bottle Light. of Jack. Yeah. And those are crazy numbers, dude. 800 side pound side. feet of torque. Those would be crazy numbers if it was a pickup truck. Well, that's yeah. what I was like. You know? That's like it's like this freaking <laughs> lightning. And how you much know? travel? Like 21 21, 21 inches. front rear. So That's basically like, I mean, take it out, take it to Baja. Just shut up and take it to Baja. Yeah, yeah. it's right. gonna be probably a three thousand pound electric trophy truck that you don't need any license to drive. So stay clear of the dunes. <laughs> Seriously, Camp Razor just got really terrifying. Oh gosh. <laughs> yeah, so Camp Razor and like behind the rocks and all those things. Yeah. I mean, I, oh. those things are powerful enough. Like, do we not need the, do we? I, nah. Well, the, but, the thing I always point out with side-by-sides is the roll cages aren't always rated for rollovers. Right. Or people, the people who don't know how to drive them and don't, <laughs> right. and don't respect the, the outdoors, you know, don't know, don't know what they're doing mm -hmm. with those things when they're just tearing stuff up. I do love the idea of an electric side-by-side. And I do love the idea of that being out there for sure, though. Mm -hmm. That they're yeah, they're coming. Uh, Polaris yeah. has an electric Ranger, like a real electric. They have one that's called the Ranger EV. It's kind of terrible, but they have a full bore one coming next year. It's I'm glad they went with Ranger EV and just go like add E to the end of Ranger. Yeah, just... no, they it's going to be the. I think the new one's actually just called the Electric Ranger, and it, it they Honestly, showed it yeah. pick up with you know a full full loaded trailer, so it's going to be good. If for nothing else, I think you're right, Sedona. The lack of that hideous noise will be really pleasant. Well, that was oh my gosh. They're gonna have to make up a noise that will just they're out. Just they are. Yeah. And it's, it's gonna be you. like get out of the way. Death metal. <laughs> yeah, it'll be like death metal noise. Was it the didn't the Volkswagen IDR have like a was it a siren as it went up Pikes Peak? Like it was like what is I, the uh, official noise of an affliction t-shirt? That's what it'll be. Motorhead? <laughs> no, 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 no. Headache. What is it? It's called an instant headache. Yes. <laughs> yeah, no. I mean, even so, like, there's such a thing as good sounding engines. All of the razors sound horrible. Yeah, it's terrible. Like blenders. So, yeah, that's... or your lawnmower, like, on steroids. <laughs> <laughs> lawnmower sounds terrible. I need yeah. to change the oil of my lawnmower. <laughs> <It's terrible. laughs> Nah, it's lifetime oil. Yeah, that's yeah. good. I don't think I've changed it in like three years. I'm like, just die already. Oh, just <laughs> die already. I've got the yeah. the the self propel on it like seized on the belt, so I just cut the belt. So I'm just pushing this thing around for the last three years. Like I just wanted to die. Oh. <laughs> Might be too cheap. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it'll be winter soon. You're fine. No, it's not, dude. It's only early September. Like it didn't. Yeah, get... so you got like three weeks. No, we're not I, in connecticut <laughs> no like i have till like early november before it starts to get like the like i've mowed the week before thanksgiving before like but you don't have to i haven't i live in a neighborhood i have to which you're about to learn all about <laughs> if you watch the, have you watched clarkson's um clarkson's farm oh yeah. it's so, so good, good. he just gets so sheep good. and that seemed to be a really great idea for there him you go. pitch that to my wife those are outlawed in my HOA. <laughs> really? <laughs> like, as in somebody, I have somebody tried? <laughs> right, like chickens. Chickens, do chickens I think... eat. Do chickens eat grass? No. Them? Not enough of it. <laughs> but they do eat like the Japanese beetles that we've now been getting for the last three years. And so when I went to buy the beetle trap this year, the guy was like, oh, no, just get one trap, cut the bag, and put it through the top of your chicken coop. And I was like, so you're telling me I'm here to buy chickens now? Like, I was just here to buy the trap. <laughs> You just told me I had to buy chickens. <laughs> and that's how you end up with a farm. You guys, I, mean, I, I, have, I still have like flashbacks from when I was a little kid. The first time I saw one of those Japanese beetles, it looks like a little itty bitty teeny human. Like a, it's so gross. If we're talking I've about the same things that I saw, like these little, like they're, they look like 
They look gross. He's looking at pictures of Japanese. Uh, Please do because I'm gonna have know. nightmares now if it's the same. If it's not the same thing. Was this in a movie? No, like it was a... in my backyard and it was oh, horrifying. Boy. And I thought that thing's gonna crawl <laughs> into my room at night. So and like, the, in these. My- Invade my rose bushes and my uh, maple trees. And... Oh, that's oh, those are June bugs. Yeah, now, that's it's different. similar to a June bug, Entirely but it's June not bugs. like these actually. June bugs don't eat any of the plants. These things will devour entire trees if they're not. Oh. All like, of the leaves will just be totally, totally gone. Yeah, we get like here too. I have a a dark maple tree. Uh, the leaves are super dark the whole year, but like at the top, I'm like, oh, it's going tan. No, it's just these things eating the little bits at the top and it kills the leaf. And so then the leaf goes wow. tan. Okay. They're, They're real pretty, A-holes. but they are very pretty. pretty. I still say good chickens. Not on that. The, I, I had a, 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 like a little rascal style playhouse that I built and I put it on Facebook because my wife was like tired of looking at it. And so I was like, okay, I'll just, so I mean, I bought it for 20 bucks. And he's like, yeah, it's going to be my chicken coop. It's like, you just saved me a whole weekend of work. Nice. Perfect. And then six weeks later, my daughter was playing in the yard in the water and she went, where's my house? <laughs> six weeks. Six weeks. Six like weeks. you've been in the yard how many yes. times? That's funny. It takes that long too, though. We're like, yeah. what? You're like, like, here, I'll give you the 20 bucks I made off of it. Exactly. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> she just given her a chicken. Like, <laughs> where do you she, want? You got chickens yeah. now. So we actually, uh, personal trip update we drove the suburban i loaded them all up and took them to oklahoma which most people don't think about being in kansas city but there's a there's a lake down there because most of kansas city goes to a place in the ozarks called lake of the ozarks Mm -hmm. we all saw it last year during the pandemic because the lake of the ozarks was full of people and it was horrible so we went to this lake in oklahoma three hours away so not too far we met rented the most amazing house that there were eight of us in it and it felt like everybody had their own space and we probably could have slept. I think I put like another eight people in it. Like if we, there was like, it was just so much room, but like when you go to the outside, you're like, that's a tiny house, but we didn't rent a boat, which is the better, the best part. Cause having a boat is already was horrible. It's just money that spews away and running, like filling the boat with fuel would have been, it would have been double the price of the trip. But we where the dock was, the the boys and and my daughter could just swim constantly. They had life jackets on, and then like a boat would go by every five minutes. I was like, see, you get to see boats, like <laughs> your boat adjacent. Experience yeah. them from afar. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So it was actually a really nice weekend to get away. And then the kids were constantly tired because they were in the water like every five minutes. So like water, <laughs> the water temperature real. was just cold enough to have <clears throat> you like get in and then immediately start to sap all of the energy out of your body, but warm enough that they also were like, I'm cold. I need to get out. Like they, they totally didn't pick up on that. Nice. So they were like, I want to go swim. And I was like, put a life jacket on, like, just go, like, I'll come watch you. I don't care at this yeah. point. So yeah. it was kind of fun. That sounds very fun. Awesome. Yeah. And I'm wondering if it was big enough for 16 people and yet Ross didn't go. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. That's a, that's a plane flight away at least. Definitely. Huh. <laughs> it's a long, what's the drive between us? Like 20 hours? Like, yeah. It's like 16 or 17 or something. Oh, okay. Yeah. But yeah, no, yeah, I would not have been able to attend it. Nice. But other, other things. Fair enough. Yeah. He, you did things. What did you do? I did things. Well, I sold the quad. Uh, over the weekend i don't think is, anybody knew you had it on sale i don't we've never don't talked about so the quad either. on the no, show for that no because it was like it just meshed into the background you know ride it on a trip park it and then you don't think about it really until the next one so the quad is gone which is good because it's just one less thing to think about um, and hopefully in its place will be something from yabaha to ride and then return and not actually own oh <laughs> yeah yamaha is supposedly going to loan me a couple things for the fall and also right. maybe can am so we'll see about that so that's that news uh, holy crap did i get the wrong writing gig <laughs> exciting well done yeah thanks yeah so we'll see things need to fall into place there and then I'm trying to get those pictures i'm trying to get those pictures <laughs> should, I, should i should i stall <laughs> google Go to your next one. (laughs) Go to the next one. Okay. Okay. So after two months of being two, yeah, two and a half, maybe three months of being carless. Go to the third one. Oh, the third one? Yeah. Wait, what's the third one? Jump the Jump the middle one? Yeah, jump the middle one. (laughs) Oh, God. The third one is that Nissan Nissan dropped off a Pathfinder today. And 
it is fifty thousand dollars. Which what? Yeah, but that's the new like thirty five. Pretty much. I mean, it it does all the same things that a thirty five or a seventy thousand dollar vehicle does, at least on the surface. Uh, the guy that dropped it off claims it has great four wheel drive and does amazing things on a test track at a Monticello named place. So gonna Wait. have to. Did he yeah. say four wheel drive or all wheel yeah. drive? He said four wheel drive. We know it's not four wheel drive. Okay, yeah. I was like, yeah. that's, um, that, that, you have a very special Pathfinder. Yeah, <laughs> that right. Was- I keep talking about like the two door ones from when I was growing up. You know, the, they were like two door and you could pull the top what? off. Those are great. So, oh, anyway, so yeah, so Nissan dropped off the Pathfinder and it is interesting. I have further thoughts coming. <laughs> But I, I've never experienced a vehicle that goes from such light steering in normal mode to such heavy steering in sport mode. Mm-hmm. And I really don't understand why it has to have that in a Pathfinder. Hmm. That's just typical. I service. mean, uh, yeah, I, I struggle with that too. I mean, there are a couple of vehicles that I've felt that on recently where I'm just like, whoa, like this thing is just loosey goosey. And I, it makes, you know, it makes parallel parking a little bit easier I think if there's just Mm -hmm. it's really electronically assisted but it feels weird and then if you're going I mean for me the the, where that the where there's a kind of a disconnect with that with that system is if you're not driving super fast but you're on a windy road Mm -hmm. then you just have so little control over the steering and I feel like I'm constantly making connect um, corrections Mm -hmm. or like you know just constantly kind of out of the lines not that you're going to be like carving up the you know the angelus crest with your pathfinder but you know if you're going out if you're going to a place like in this lovely stock photo from nissan then yeah (laughs) i mean it's likely that you're not going to be hauling but you know around a Mm -hmm. around a bend and it's just it sort of lacks just lacks a little bit of 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 control for me and that's a head scratcher on the highway it's great you're like oh this feels like it has weight and i'm actually doing something Mm -hmm. so we're 98 percent of pathfinder owners (laughs) you know what i mean let's call a spade a spade this thing i mean looks amazing compared to the last one oh the last one was like a squashed jelly bean this one actually (laughs) looks like something that's the one in that picture is identical to the one that's parked outside and there's a good chance that it could be because everything all the press materials they gave me are stamped in huge letters pre-production which yeah. is like oh what oh, is 100 percent on here yeah i mean if you look at that bad looking if you look up beige in a dictionary <laughs> that is what you see yeah it was the, just so non-committal on every level i right? feel like I feel like this debuted in like 2012 or maybe it was like yeah. 2013 at the North American Auto Airbus. Show. Yeah. And I, and I saw it and I was like, well, they've ruined the Pathfinder. Like I, and then I literally forgot about it for six years. Like until they were, they right. were bringing out a new one. I was like, you still making it? Because like, yeah. before the last one, there was the, like the middle two thousands and you could get a V8 and it was like body on frame and it was still good and trucky. Yeah. yeah. And then it turned into a trucky. <laughs> Lop trucky, yeah. It turned into a neat, a pathfinder that that found no paths. Aha! That Ooh. sounds I like mean, a retrospective article title. It was. I listen. I reviewed that hunk of garbage. That's basically <laughs> what I said. You know? Yeah, that's the good one. I Those like this awesome. one. Yeah. That's just little... looks like Armada. You know, that's got that same like that same kind of rear door so look. It's, yeah. it's literally this. Same front end as your Frontier that you raced, right? Like, isn't that the same grill? And yep. Well, listen, they were married to that for, you know, the better part of a of two decades. <laughs> it was like almost two decades. <laughs> Seriously, when did that Frontier debut? Oh four. Yeah. Frontier, Xterra, Titan. What else? Oh. That. <laughs> that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> whatever that is whatever that is so anyways last bit of news on my front and then we will move on is that after being without my own vehicle for a few months after the miata and forerunner run away i have a new vehicle and it's jeep and it's here and it used to belong to dan edmonds 
So get it's, out of uh, here. Oh, yeah. and, <laughs> well taken care of then. Very, exactly. <laughs> very, very well taken care of, very well built. And yeah, now it has a new home. So he owned it. It, it was actually Edmund's presser before it, uh, sure. before he bought it. And he owned means, it for a long time. That means he got it for a steal. Probably, probably, but now it's mine. And That's great. I've, uh, yeah, I, I drove it all of maybe 20 miles so far. Um, it came from California, as you can see by the California plates in Connecticut. And it did and not get that dirty with you driving it, correct? No, all of that. So he washed it like the morning that it got picked up and all of that dirt is just from the trip from being, you know, on the top of like a two level car. Not, in, not in covered, yeah. not a covered transport. Yes, covered transport is very expensive and yeah. Uh, <laughs> not doable. But the, the most exciting thing that's happened with it since it arrived is that today I went to register it at the DMV. And they told me I couldn't register it because I owed the state $3.59 in outstanding taxes. <laughs> oh my God. In California, <laughs> they'd be like, you owe us $3,000. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, is clearing. I like tried to give the lady a five and she was like, no, you have to pay it directly to the state. I can't do it. I was like, oh, uh, you are the state, <laughs> you know? So I have to go back on Saturday. So it's going to sit exactly where it is right now. Uh, and I'll just keep driving the Pathfinder until the Jeep is uh, legal. Luckily, oh, it worked out. Worked out. But yeah, no, it's it's my first Jeep, and Jeep is the reason that I'm in the car world, automotive world. So, what? What are you? Your dad's mostly? Jeep is the reason that you're. It, like, yeah, my dad's yeah, Jeep. Like so <laughs> he just said my first Jeep, yeah. and Jeep is the reason. Like, oh well, clarify. my dad's Jeep, and my my dad being into the Jeeps. First, and, but your first Jeep, up, like the first that belongs first. to you. Yes, that's awesome. Congratulations! So you, have to, you have to stop calling it Dan's Jeep. It is no longer Dan's Jeep. Yeah, it's Ross's it Jeep. <laughs> it's my Jeep now. I you already ordered parts. On it. I did. So they're not really parts. They're mirrors for when the doors are off. That's not, it's got a part number. Yeah, it has part. a part number. Yeah, it has a part number. Yeah. So, so that's that. And I have an off-roading trip planned potentially for some time soon. There's things that are going to happen. It's going to be good. Very good. Congratulations. Can't wait to hear. Thanks. How you yep. like it? And the goal, it's great. I mean, um, I've never, I've driven two-door Wranglers before, but not any that were modified. So driving this on good suspension and tires, it actually is more stable than a stock Wrangler, even though it's taller. Yeah. And uh, Dan, yeah, it's, I'm assuming Dan put that suspension on there. He did. He put everything on himself. So listen, you know, if, if if you want, if you have anyone do it, I I would trust Dan. Likewise, yeah, yeah. guys who Likewise. used to work at, at Toyota Development doing, Center, so I mean, doing he, suspension, he was, like he was a suspension engineer. Like, yeah. hi, mm -hmm. <laughs> no yeah, that's, that's yeah. I, one of my friends was like, "Wait, you've never driven this, and you bought it?" I was like, "You um, don't know who I bought it from, bro." <laughs> very confident in who I bought it from. So. Right. Yeah, the, the goal is actually to get it out to Colorado and do some trails out there because my best friend lives out there. We did some trails in his Tacoma, but I think doors and roof off in uh, in the Jeep would be pretty great. So hopefully so those afternoon spring. storms can pop up and rain all over you. It'll be Love fantastic. It. Great. Water. It's like, thanks. Thanks for raining. Yeah. Literally raining on that. <laughs> Dude, I love the mountain afternoon storms. That's why. I oh, don't they're have the a best. Jeep. They're the best. That's why I don't have a Jeep. Uh, so, anyways, so the thing, of interest. things are coming up. It's soon, isn't it? <laughs> what? The rally, isn't it soon? Oh, or is it the yes. end of October? The thing. <laughs> the thing, you know, the, uh, the Rebel Rally, the thing that yes. you guys have done twice, three times. Together three times. Together yes. three times. Okay. This will be the third year. Lady's done it six times over there. This will be her <laughs> sixth time. Oh. My favorite oh. all too. So yeah, she's hundred percent, man. She's been at every one. She's the she's the queen. <laughs> Not the queen, but I have done it all six times. <laughs> <laughs> when you and guys have been is, right testing. around the corner. You guys were testing even preparations underway. Mm, yes. Some yes. some desert fun. We did. We had some. Yep, exactly. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that picture. That one exactly. Like. Excellent. I mean, we can we can say testing in air quotes there, right? I mean, um, it's a race vehicle in the dirt. It's desert right. fun for sure. Yeah. 
No, we, you know, listen, we were really hoping to get the, the new one to do some testing. See, look, there's, we have like a mascot. There's yeah. all kinds of great stuff just in case. But, you know, Nissan was very generous in sending us our old, I like that picture just because I thought, oh, I look really skinny. <laughs> <laughs> I like to look like a dork in that picture, but whatever. Um, yeah, Nissan was great. And and we, we asked them, we said, oh, hey, guys, you know, do you think we could have, um, you know, Emmy's Miata, right? That, yes, that, we know right? Buddy. That, buddy. Buddy. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, so we, we just asked them, we're like, Hey, could we have a truck? And, and they're like, Oh, we'll, we'll have to think about that. You know? Oh, we don't know. And then I think Sedona, was it you who were like, what about our old truck? Yeah. Like they were like, Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know about that. Cause they so don't really have them just sitting around right now. Like the, new the older one. version. So the older mm-hmm. versions as well as, you know, they're like, well, we're moving out of that. So production wise, they don't have old ones sitting around. So they were very generous and being like, yeah, no, we'll send that one back to you. So that was only after, so Sedona and I both went to the Frontier event and it was only after Dan Pass, who is the head of Nissan PR in North America. Yeah, that, only that's after good. he had a couple glasses of wine and was like, oh, your truck's just sitting in a parking lot. <laughs> It's just like, okay, just, I wonder if we'll have that. <laughs> Can we borrow that? Look at him and go, would, would anybody notice if it just like disappeared? <laughs> I mean, that might have been mentioned. <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> there had been talk like when we got the, 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 um, the Armada, which was the Mountain Patrol. I mean, you guys remember that like mm-hmm. beast of a thing. And we were like, oh, they were, they told us, they're like, oh, you guys, like, this is going to go into the Lane Museum in Nashville. And this is like, we're so, this has been all over the world. And again, we were like, oh, it's so great. And we feel so honored and right. And then it was the same dinner that Dan's like, oh, no, it was sitting in the parking lot for like a year and a half with flat tires. <laughs> that one. <laughs> oh, He's that's like, not so cool. I, flat I tires, tires too. And I took it for oh. a drive. <laughs> Yep. He takes his daughter to school in it and she's just horrified. <laughs> I don't know why. I think that thing is lovely. Right? Massive, but lovely. killer. <laughs> my, my kid's school, I went to pick him up one day and everybody was literally, like literally there were four white forerunners with ladders up the back and gold wheels. I was like, okay, so there's a style here. I just. Right. <laughs> is the ladder for like so they can wash the top easily i i have no idea like we live in suburbia like it's the ultimate like mall crawler like it just looks silly that well, doesn't look silly. i mean as nuts as this thing was like i will always like like have a super like warm and fuzzy place in my heart for that like goliath thing because it's, it's awesome fun. they are awesome it is it was well built and well designed for sure. So yeah, and we had a blast in it. And you know, it's kind of nice when you're in like leather leather seats when you're doing a <laughs> ten day rally. Yeah, so it was great. We had a we had a good time. That that thing was hella fun in the dunes. It was like okay, here we go. Yeah, great. We had fun. Those this are- year, oh, this year. You guys are gonna you guys are gonna be very excited when you see this year's truck. It's gonna be very good. Yeah, I'm assuming it's a new frontier. We're really excited because in a couple of oh. weeks we get to actually show everybody what we're taking, and that will be super fun. This so. is I have shades of the last time that we had Emmy and Rebecca on, and it was like right before they had announced what they were driving <laughs> to. I was like, damn it, I mistimed it. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what's going to be. <laughs> Everybody will just have to pay really close attention. So four wheels. Four wheel drive. Four wheel drive. I don't know. Maybe it's a maybe it's a rally Z. All, all wheel drive. Wouldn't that be cool? I wish they, I don't know. I don't think it's coming with all wheel drive. Otherwise, that'd be rad. <laughs> that'd be insane. <laughs> Uh, what did you say? Rally B? Oh, rally, oh, rally Z. Rally Z. Z. Oh, rally Z. Z. Oh, Z. oh my rally. gosh. They had, they built a... Someone built one of those. Kind of shitbox Rally Z for Top Gear. Did they? I think so. 
maybe not. We thought Rally GTR would oh, be really Oh, yeah, smart. yeah, they did. Rally GTR, good God. This this is what we're talking about, right? sounding rally car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yes, <laughs> yes. So if we rallied it out, that looked badass. They did. did a- Jethro did his <clears throat> Overland 350Z. That's what I was thinking. That's what you're oh, thinking of. Oh, that's right. Derek, I remember that. Derek walked us through that build. Right. We need to talk to Derek. That, again soon. By the way, that was such crap that that thing was less than five hundred dollars or whatever their max budget, their was. budget was. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> all of them went over, and yeah. they, oh, sure, all of them. Like R- Rob's what was that a forerunner with a shed on the back? Like, yeah, buddy, okay. I thought it was like a van, wasn't it? A van? Dax had no, a van. Dax, Dax had the Dax van. Is, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, oh, that the waterbed. <laughs> yeah. Derek sent me Derek, a, so. <laughs> a text of him and the waterbed like Ugh. 10 months before that ever came out. And I was just like, well, I'm eventually it's either popping or someone's stabbing it. There's no way they're letting that thing go. There's much too much that? production value. <laughs> How yeah. much context was provided in the waterbed picture text? Oh, it was enough. Like was it was it just, actually a it video. was just the waterbed and nothing and like it was like a behind the scenes clip of Derek explaining what was going on. So it was uh, there was actual context. It was good. Okay. That's funny. Uh, Anyways, so what are the uh details of this year's rally? How much do you know or are you allowed to share? Well, there are some things that have changed. Um the last five years we've started in the Lake Tahoe area. And this year we're starting in Arizona. We're starting in the Hoover Dam. Oh, so sweet. It's going to be, we don't know a ton, obviously, of the route, but we assume we're going to probably touch into Arizona, which I'm really, really excited about, um, but still be in Nevada and California for places that I know all of the course directors really love. So we don't know much more about that. So that's what they hard. really keep you in the dark until oh. like the morning of until you roll oh, up absolutely. to the start line. Yeah. Even during the day, Ross, we're in the dark. Yeah. Like yeah. that's it. They're like, okay, Fair here enough. you go. You're on your own. Bye. And you're like, wait, what? You so yeah. checkpoints? No. Yeah. Who knows? You guys, maybe it is, maybe it's not. But yeah. And this this is my nerdy question because the the driving is a big deal, but like the navigation part of it to me is like the more ridiculous side of things. Like, because I still can't wrap my head around going like back with a compass and a topographic map. To, like my brain, like I, I did it as a Cub Scout, I, I don't know that I could redo it. So the picture of you standing yes. over a map, how, how much prepping are you doing there? Or is it more just trying to like reorientate a skill? So, I mean, for that, we were actually plotting the points. So we're okay. given the GPS coordinates on a sheet of paper and I can use the map ruler and actually plot a GPS coordinate on the map. Okay. Um, so we were actually practicing our plotting skills and um, we could get up to like 26, I think last year, we got up to 26 checkpoints we'd have no, to plot. It was more like 33. It was, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. oh, it was. that one day in Dove Springs and other place, oh, there, yeah. it was like 33 checkpoints. <laughs> You couldn't get them all, but there was too many. Right. So they, they've they gotten to where they're like, well, people are bumped up their skills. So they're like, you have to plot them. And if you don't plot them all, then you don't always see the full course. Like you don't okay. know how to pick and choose which mm-hmm. points you have there. So um, I really love all Topo maps now. Like that's my jam. So <laughs> like it's a skill and that's, yeah, I have to hone in and I practice um, this is about the time I start bubbling down and it's really about um, speed and accuracy of plotting in the mornings because you don't get a ton of time. And um, so the quicker you can get them onto the map, the better you are getting out the start line. So that's really when I start to buckle down. Just so you know, the extent of my job in the morning is to get her coffee and like food and just whatever she wants. Stand, I'm gonna, stand like, it all. I'm gonna let you in on a <laughs> She I, is, she's underestimating or she's underplaying her job there. Not true. <laughs> you can't, you cannot do well in this competition with a, with a mediocre navigator. So Emmy and I were joking once they thought, you know, we thought, oh, if we traded, you know, if we switched teammates, we thought, you know, I thought, you know, if Emmy, if they put you and me together, we'd be fucked. Like there's no <laughs> way. But if they put, but if they put Sedona and Rebecca together, yeah, they'd be fine. They'd still be able yep. to navigate. Winner, winner, <laughs> chicken dinner. They can both drive. It's not like, you know, it's not Dakar like right. level stuff, 
but man, it's won and lost by how good your navigator is, period. She's good. I'm lucky. <laughs> Thank you. So like, and I, and I remember when we talked with Rebecca, she was like, I had some like sailing experience that helped me for like reading sailing uh, charts. Did you have any experience ahead of time or was it just skills you picked up? No. So when I signed up for this, I had very little offer of driving experience and absolutely no map and compass experience. <laughs> um, I was eight months Look pregnant around. when I signed up for the first one. And I was like, okay, by the time this rally comes around, I'm going to have an eight month old and okay. I'm going to have to like really hone in some skills. So I started practicing right away and it all stemmed from my husband. He's like, he wanted to do some overlanding and I wasn't against it, but I was like, I just want to camp. Like, why do we have to go driving everywhere? Like, <laughs> exactly. I like why, why can't I just go camping? And he's like, no. And then he let me, he's like, you have to drive. And that really was like, I want to do this. And so I had, I wanted to go to the gazelle, which is in Morocco. And that was my right. initial start of wanting to like get out there and do that. But then the rally, the rebel came around and I was like, that's closer, more affordable. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to have an eight month old. So I really like to be a little bit closer. Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. So, and I started my navigation with an REI map and compass class. Like that's okay. how I started learning how to really hone it in and YouTube because mm. YouTube teaches me many things. <laughs> so the encyclopedia of the 21st century. Right. It's true. It's really true. Well, and I'm a very hands-on um, visual learner. So I feel like YouTube helps me a ton to be able to mm. see what they're talking about, not just read it. Do you go out and do like field practice? leading up to it or is it all just at home like pen and paper so it's a lot of at home pen and paper because like I said it's about the speed and accuracy of plotting those points and that can be practiced at the table um and I try and do it at weird times too because in the rebel you wake up and there's uh, well this year there's going to be like 100 plus competitors in this massive oh. tent it's going to be loud it's going to be small spaces like we won't have tables like table space like I do at home so I really mm -hmm. try and practice it in different places and just be comfortable to like sit on the ground with a board and uh, do practice that way um but then when I get a chance to go out with like Lynn and actually practice driving and do visual that is super helpful because it it doesn't always translate like what you see on a map doesn't come to life until you actually see a mountain that you're like oh, oh. that's what that <laughs> uh -huh. is that's I'm also, that I mean, I'm, I'm really convinced too, that that's one of those skills, not just being able to plot accurately, quickly, but I think when you can actually look at what's on the map and translate that out into what is in the world, I feel like that you maybe could learn that, but I really feel like in a lot of people, that's just, that's an innate skill. And Sedona just happens to have that innate skill. She can look at a map and go, oh yeah, that's that. That's mm -hmm. that. That's the thing, take me over to that finger thing over there. Okay. You know, and it's very, she's very rarely like, they call it magic mapping, right? Donut, like it's just yeah. like sort of like, oh, I think this is, this looks like it could potentially sort of maybe be it. And you want it to be it desperately because you don't want it to be lost. lost. Mm -hmm. But it's just not it. And so, uh, you know, where she's remarkable to me is just this, like, this almost intuitive uh, ability to just sort of know. Okay. And that's come from six years or five years of that now. Like, the first couple of years, mm -hmm. definitely magic mapped it. Like, there was a definite <laughs> couple of points just, where I was like, you just ruined <laughs> everything I just said. <laughs> but that comes with practice. Like, everybody yeah. like, has to go through those moments. And I would get out there more and use local maps and stuff. Um, and But that's hard too because the Rebel maps are very different. They print them specifically for this event. So, like, what you would typically Ooh. see on, like, on a, um, like the Forest Service maps isn't necessarily what you will see on a rebel map. Sometimes they don't always put all of those pieces that you would use on there. So I like to practice with both and definitely get out and enjoy. And I try and take a map wherever I'm going because I love, love, love to see it come to life. Mm -hmm. And my husband gets really annoyed when we're driving. I'm like, I wonder what that looks like on a map. And he's like, eh, <laughs> it's a mountain. Like it's a, it's a mountain, Sedona. It probably right. looks yeah. like a mountain. <laughs> men, men just have a natural aversion to maps anyway so yeah. oh, i don't yeah. 
the I first time <laughs> my dad and I went to like the north north portion of Maine on an ATV trip, we we're like, we're gonna go roadmaps only, no GPS, no navigation or anything. And we got so lost. Like <laughs> I can't even begin to tell you. Yeah. Uh, right. Yeah. Well, the amount of times that like you run it, like you think, oh, my phone will have GPS, I'll have service. Doesn't always work that way, mm. especially not in <laughs> enough true. detail. That's my that husband. Is very true. <laughs> He's our rally husband. He's my <laughs> rally husband. Yeah. Uh, that's funny. So great. He's so, terrific because he's just super supportive. And I think, you know, it's so interesting because there are definitely a lot of women who I think will say, oh, I can't leave my kids or I feel like I'm being a bad mom. And I think to me, you know, I'm not a mother, but I think ha having known Sedona for as long as I do now, knowing her husband, knowing her children, I mean, hearing those kids like say, oh man, my mom's a badass. Like my mom does, <laughs> like, it's so cool. And I think that's, there's so much value in that. And you're doing something for yourself and you're showing that you are as important as anybody else in that family unit. Right. And it's, I think she's, you know, doing something unbelievably brave and it's difficult and it's difficult for her. Right. I mean, she's away from her children. <laughs> like hi. Uh, sometimes it's nice. Well, you know, that first year was real hard. <laughs> the first year would be definitely, you know, when he's eight mm -hmm. months old, that's, that's hard. Yeah. Now, three days before she's like, please take my phone. Please just mm -hmm. take my phone. Now. I know. <laughs> <laughs> just go away. I get very distracting at this point when I try and focus, but you know, it's a good thing. And I love that they get to see me do something I love. And, you know, I have two boys, so I, I just want them to be able to be like, yeah, you know, I want to support my future spouse the way my dad supports like mom I love that I love that example of our relationship to you so it's impressive that um, the amount of people that we've heard that were like oh my husband would never let me like that's so I'm like really let you, that's let me, that's yeah, huge <laughs> yeah and, I don't like that language let me but, yeah, I don't uh, like it either no no I don't no, I don't no. either and I'm like I mean our, well and then I asked to look at it too I was like is that dual-sided like is that from them too being like I don't want to push myself out of my limits to be like oh no I will I'm gonna do this mm -hmm. and and I know you're gonna be a great support for me um so that's interesting to be I was surprised by how many people because Doug has always been like nope go ahead let's do this and he really embraces that um two weeks spending time with the boys the first year he took I had a three year old and then the eight month old and he took them and did a huge road trip. Yeah. Um, he had a refrigerator full of breast milk. Like it was perfect. And he like <laughs> camped with them and like, and so every year it kind of falls around fall break and um, he's just trying to do a little bit of something fun. That's just for them. And I love that. This is my favorite photo. This is my <laughs> favorite photo. You so just look good. like such a rock star in that picture, dude. I'm like bring me my platter. <laughs> I need my map. Let me get my map. Slave, bring me my stuff. Yeah. Okay. Here's my dogs. <laughs> we, when we had a lot on, her dogs erupted at the end of the show. Oh yeah, so, <laughs> they were nice. quiet the entire show. I think Tom showed up, and all of a sudden the dogs were nuts. Yeah, it's you know, it's it's not for um not for the faint of heart but you know what it's also not not for the faint of heart because I feel like there there is something to be had and to be learned for everybody and for every skill level you know I know you're not gonna you're not gonna win probably your first year out even if you listen we've had navigators who are like oh I've navigated in Bora and I've na you know I've navigated Baja this is a different animal completely mm -hmm. and um you know, it's humbling. Like, it's just that that would be like my biggest, like, catch word for this whole thing. It's just, it's humbling. When you guys yeah. only missed yeah. a podium by two points last year? <clears throat> it was a little bit more than that. It ended up being a little bit more than that. I like think out of 30 points. Yeah. Going into the final day, I think we were three points out of third. And you know what? Listen, if we had had a different day, Maybe, but you know what? The, the women who came in third 
as far as Sedona and I are concerned, I mean, we are so happy for them. It's a mother daughter team. And like, these are formidable ladies. I mean, the mother is like, she's a bioengineer and the daughter is like a, you know, a chemical engineer. I mean, these women are just like, what? Like, wow. Okay. <laughs> I mean, they're amazing. And they're every time you see them happy, fun, smiling. Hi. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. And you know so, what? They had a killer day on the final day and no one was happier for them than Sedona and me. Yeah. <laughs> Because so, we know what um, that feels like, you know, you know what that feels like, especially in the same, yeah, yeah the Benzies, the molecular biology. You did Tudor JK? Holy crap. Yeah. That's her. Oh, yeah. Brutal. Stop. Vehicle. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you said there's a hundred entrants this year? There's 50 teams. 50 teams? Yeah. How many of those are returning? Do you know? Uh, that's a really Ooh. good question. I'm not sure we know that answer. Hmm. I don't know it specifically, but I feel like Sedona that most, a lot of them are um, new competitors. Oh, wow. But How I many... will tell you this, the returners are formidable. really good. <laughs> 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 We're well... like, oh, snap. That person's now with that person? Yikes. Like, whoa, okay. How many entrants were there last year? Uh, 30 36 30 yeah so oh, 36 wow. so that's that's a well, big jump there are 36 yeah. teams featured on the website from last year's race so in the, COVID, um, in the covid times i think it was you know a lot of yeah, oems had to drop yeah. out and stuff uh, a lot of oems sense. and a lot of our international teams yeah they couldn't get in too. So. Oh, um, and this year i believe we we've got a little bit more of international teams and the people that couldn't get it couldn't do it last year they're just like we just couldn't so mm -hmm. um, and the fact that emily proved that we could do it through the covid times i think that made a big difference to people they're like okay like we walked out of that with no covid cases you know that's amazing yeah so i had yeah. to rotate now you guys are seeing my dinosaur problem <laughs> they problem? have been baited it's uh, a, I, I have issues. Let's see. It looks like it's about to eat your head, though, from on here. <laughs> dinosaur problems for me are dinosaurs on the floor that I just stepped on. Step on. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Those and Legos. Not Legos. Yeah. yeah. Oh, man. That's sure. But so, yeah, it's a full field. And I think what 52 teams is the limit that Emily has set. And as far as I know, mm -hmm. last time we I spoke to her, you know, Sedona and I talked to her like, we were at the, she was at the limit. It's going to be interesting That's because amazing. we've never had a field that large. It's going to so, be massive. Yeah. It'll be really interesting once we get out there and logistically, like how everybody kind of navigates that. You no, know, around each other. Yeah. So there's <laughs> like 24 hours of lemons, except in the desert. Huh. Hopefully not 24 hours. I want to yeah, go back. Also back. <laughs> <laughs> so for, so like on a race day, you guys choose your path to the points but yeah, like mostly yes they're, unless they're unless they give specific directions of like okay. you have to take this route because of their permitting they there are right. some moments and they usually give right. us um, a road book for those okay. and that means we okay. have to stay on track we have to stay on time those kinds of things but it, yeah if you go out to areas where we're allowed to kind of choose those choice like the choice of which trail we tend to choose your you know hopefully what we think is the best one. <laughs> right. So everyone's making their own best decision. So hopefully it kind of spreads mm -hmm. it out a little bit. That's kind of where yeah, I was and they, There tends to be groups. I mean, we don't know how exactly it's going to play out, but in previous years, they've done a group A and a group B. Um, and that spreads the field out too a little bit. So that not everyone's going to the same points. And, and quite frankly, because of all the points, some people are like, I'm not even going to try for that black okay. checkpoint. Like mm -hmm. I'm not even going to go for it. And they just go past it. Um, and every day it's really like you, like us as a team have to decide what we want to do and stick to our own rally. Because if you kind of start paying attention to all the other cars and where they're going, you're going to get lost in their rally, not your own. Right. Like the, the map points that you plotted in the morning are very important to your day. Yes. Yeah. yeah. 
Well, and, and you never know. I mean, we've had a couple of people come up and, you know, we're at a blue flag and they're like, oh, is this the blue? And we're like, dude, we don't know what we don't know. group you're in. Like, so <laughs> don't like you figure it out for yourself because like you following us could be a big disaster. Right. It could be the other and, groups blue. And for the most part, you know, most competitors want to kind of figure it out for themselves. And, and, you know, for us, it's almost like we, we do all this work and we, you know, we, we get to this, this hill, this precipice and we come down and we see all, you know, we see other vehicles and we're like, oh shit. You know, like, <laughs> we wanted, to, we wanted to be Magellan. We wanted to find yeah. it all by ourselves. It just doesn't always work that way, but um, the way Emmy explained it when we were with her this weekend, she's like, it's because you're doing it right. And so are they, like, you guys are just trying to do the rally right and then yeah. show up at the right point. That's not a terrible thing. Right. Um, well, and that's when, and Jonah, that's when strategy really comes into it because yes. for the black checkpoints, there ain't nothing out there telling you, yes, this is it. Or maybe this is it. There's nothing out there. So it could be like a turtle in the road that they just decided they liked. And so we don't, there is no indicator for a black checkpoint. And that, that is what really separates the wheat from the chafe. And, and it's, that's what, that's what really like, that's how you win is you find that you find those checkpoints along with all of the other ones, that's going to, that's going to push you higher up. And those are hard. They don't pick turtles that move though, right? <laughs> Just oh no turtles. it definitely was they planned that route and that turtle has long gone now yeah <laughs> this is... just a spot <laughs> yeah right. but yeah but it's like there's no yeah it's just a, a spot out in the desert that's like this big okay okay cool so there's a lock that. yeah so the the devices that you guys used to check in is kim just run around with one of those ahead of time and plot her own points <laughs> she's just all over the desert i, oh, I think and- that Emily does that? Emily, sorry. Okay. And it's, it's a crew of them for sure, okay. but with Emily at point that, yeah. And they, you know, they drive around, they find points that they like. They, they take into account a lot of things. They say, I really love this view. Okay. Like, we want you guys to stop and see this view. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. Don't, yeah. you know, it's not just about getting the points. Um, and then there are times where I think they just really make it challenging. They're like, we gave you a 200,000 scale map and you have to find this point that's as big as your pencil point. Like that's, oh, that's the challenge of it. Chris, Man. if you if you look up Jimmy Lewis on Instagram, Jimmy Lewis is really, I mean, he is the course director. So he's a like, I mean, he's just a superstar. He's a, um, he's a, a Dakar motorcycle, like winner. He's a, I mean, the guy is just like bad ass, like, I mean, just really outstanding, knows the area so well. And again, just like he, he and, and Emily together really put the, put together a beautiful course. And they say to us, they're like, oh, I mean, there was one, I think there was one point, was it last year or the year before Donut, where we were like, well, we we couldn't, oh, it was two years ago. We couldn't find it. And we were like, oh, we went up this weird wrong yeah. thing. And then we were like, oh, but Jim, this would have been a better one because this view was so good. And and then we actually found the one that the, the, the actual flag where it was supposed to be. And we were like, oh yeah, okay, this is way better. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy read a lot like, of right. motorcycles. Yeah, yes. but he's a motorcycle guy. Okay. Yeah. I found his Instagram, but it's all motorcycles in the air. <laughs> yeah, oh, <great>. yeah, <laughs> he is that guy. Like, and you're just like, what? It was also another fun oh, man. Jimmy Lewis is funny. So when we were in Glamis, so there's like a, yeah, yep. I mean, that's... hi, hi. That's that's the guy. Oh, so we were out. I can feel like, my bones right breaking at the border <laughs> of of the sand dunes in Glamis, where there's sort of like this irrigation ditch, and listen they're i mean they're constantly checking people making sure everyone is on the up and up no one has a like super secret like you know inspector gadget device with them and there was we were all like it was our team and then a couple of one other team that were we were all doing very well yeah i mean don't mess with that guy right (laughs) and out of nowhere we're plotting this point and we're like, you know, the panic has started because you're like, time is running out and you're just like, oh my gosh, we have to do this. And all of a sudden I see this 
dude with a helmet on, full face helmet, like walking from behind, like out of nowhere, didn't, nowhere. Hear anything, didn't hear anything, just out of nowhere. And I'm like, Rochelle, Rochelle, there's, there's a dude behind your truck right now. There's just who, like, what is that? Who is that? Fucking terrified. I was like, oh my God, we're out in the middle of nowhere. And this motorcycle gang is like coming upon us. And it was Jimmy just making sure we were. Yeah. The fact That's that we funny. didn't hear him either was impressive that we were just so in the zone. We're like, oh, oh, oh. And of course, so in Glamis, that's probably the most public place that we end up going. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's why they kind of keep track a lot there because mm -hmm. they're like, well, this is where people could come in and, and actually be like, hey, here's, here's your right. point, which, you know, you still have to get there. But I appreciate that they want to keep everybody, the whole rally on the up and up and, and create a classy event and mm -hmm. keep it simple. It was just funny. He just, you know. And he's not like a big effusive, like, hey, hi guys, the kind of guy. It's just like, so it's like checking what we're doing. <laughs> Being super quiet. How'd yeah. you find this? How'd you find this checkpoint? He was trying to sneak <laughs> up on you to find out if you're doing anything sketchy. Seriously. Seriously. That's awesome. <laughs> it's terrifying. I'm gonna have nightmares about that. And, and, and I'm like looking over at Sedona, and Sedona's like, well, I plotted it right here. See, it's right, it, it's, it's where we plotted it. And he's like, Okay. Okay. Gets on his bike and like moves on. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Next people to haunt on off. So all right. all right. Let's uh let's talk about a couple other things and then I need to wrap up to go do schoolwork. So I first want to touch on the uh the Suzuki. How's the XL7 doing? <laughs> Good. Uh one of the owners just flew. He just finished he's just gonna sound so bougie. He just finished um, repainting his plane, which has taken him like a year and a half to do. Mm -hmm. um, but he's finally got it. He lives in Wisconsin, and so he flies out. And he just flew to Moab. Um, actually, it's one Bravo one. You can. I, I may have, he may have posted some stuff. That's his Instagram. Uh, his Instagram handle, and uh, he's sort of a co tri owner with me and Aaron Robinson and. Um, and yeah, so he just took it out yesterday or two days ago, and I think went and they like they kind of went to near where Seven Mile Rim is and got to see Monitor and Merrimack. He took a friend out there who has never been to Moab, and so yeah, do it's oh. doing great. We had a we kept going back there and having a flat tire, and so we were just like ah, but we the guy at the shop was like, oh, you just need to rotate the tires. And we're like, said what? So he just rotated the tires and now for some reason it just doesn't go flat anymore. So he was magic. It didn't like that position. <laughs> no, I guess it didn't. So yeah, it's doing great. Um, voodoo we're magic on that one. Uh, some voodoo. Yeah. Like, so I'm not going to be able to, like, <coughs> I think Aaron's going to go out um, end of September and we'll be there over Christmas as usual. And mm -hmm. you know, the, the Zuki will be uh, in full effect, but it's doing great. Okay, cool. Yeah, it's awesome. Very, very cool. And how's the Montero? I know that was the other. Montero's great. I mean, uh, yeah, honestly, it's doing so, it's doing so well. I had such a little. Oh. Amber alert. <laughs> or flash flood. Probably not flash flood. You guys alert. seen a missing elderly couple? Oh, oh silver gosh. alert. Oh, no. A silver alert. Oh. Missing endangered elderly. Oh, my God. Oh, oh like, that's so terrible. Terrible. I mean, losing kids is bad too, but losing old people is terrible. Yeah. Well, we hope they are okay. found healthy and alive. Oh dear. Okay. Um, that was a little scary. Uh, yeah, the Montero is fantastic. Um, you know, I usually daily drive it around town. I won't take it for super long trips if I go wheeling in it, like when I took it to, you know, usually I'll, if it's just Hungry Valley or somewhere local, then, you know. It's not good on the highway, guys. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> it's, I'm like, no. I'm I like driving up hills at speed. No. But it's, but it's terrific. You know, I got some nice, I, I kind of copied Jeff Glucker and I got some nice like sheepskin seat covers for it. <laughs> oh, man. So it's all good. Yeah, That's I love funny. it. Love good. it, love it. I'm getting some new tires for it. Bredestein is sending me some of their light truck tires. Ooh. New, new company that um that's just starting to uh 
to make an appearance in the in the Americas. They're owned by mm-hmm. Continental or Apollo, who like owns 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 owns. And um, yeah, I just did some testing on the tie on their new like truck tires, and they're I was very impressed. They were pretty good. So yeah, they're sending me some tires to test, and Wild Grace might be doing some testing with them. So yeah, this is cool. Is it, is it an all terrain or is it just a all season light truck? All terrain. Okay. What's the, What's the name, name of it? The Pinza. Pinza. Oh, that's Pinza what I thought. Altering. So before I sold my Forerunner, I was actually talking to the Vrenestein rep about tires for the Forerunner. Yeah. And then sold the Forerunner, and then the rep I had been talking to left Vrenestein. Oh, nice. <laughs> that's <laughs> So I need to yeah. go reach back out to Roger and maybe uh, find something to Is it- play with these on. Is it similar to like a, a Yokohama Geolander Falcon Wild Peak a little, style? Yeah, yeah, yeah. A little yeah. less aggressive. It's like um like that new Goodyear Trail Runner kind of. But it's better than like an open country. It's yes. definitely so. So this tire is like designed by Jajaro. And you're like, uh, okay. She pronounced I mean, it correctly. This, yeah, Giorgetto Giorgiaro. I mean, say that ten times fast. But yeah, so it it actually looks really good. Um, mm-hmm. They do have an all-terrain Pinza that's not the light truck version. It's okay. just like the SUV version. But I was on the light truck version, and it's more aggressive. Like it's got really good shoulder. Um, it it was it you know it was ridiculously comfortable on the road. Um, quieter than I anticipated it being. And yeah, I was like, dude, I like these so much. I want to test them on my truck. So that's awesome. Yeah. I'm uh, the suburban has 22s and I've hated it ever since we got the suburban. Yeah. And Chevy 18s are available all the time, but I, I want to, it's got Michelin's on it right now. Like they're going to last for freaking forever. Yeah. But I want to go 18s and I want to go like a, because I have Toyota open countries on the Sequoia and they are loud. Like they're okay i mean it's an, uh, the only reason why i got them for the monteros is because that's they have there it's 15s and it runs like this weird size yeah. like a 225 75 15 which is like a huh who makes yeah. that nobody <laughs> toyo does, <laughs> toyo does. <laughs> right right yeah. so you know getting cool. some new meats new Very meat cool. keep us okay. posted and okay bug. shifting Bug, Baja bug. bug, lots yeah. of bug, Baja so much bug. bug. It's the coolest so thing I've bug. seen in a while. We have left oh. this last. I, I we... might have reread that article multiple times. It's oh, so good. Definitely, <laughs> definitely didn't. I don't know who anybody who. <laughs> uh, well, it was a yeah. That's Hilda, because Tilda? I cannot name a car. Hilda. Oh, Hilda. I, <laughs> so she was a super fun project, and I did have. The opportunity to write for Hooniverse about her and I had an incredible time writing it as well as doing the build with my husband um, and kids adjacent kind of thing so, <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's a fun uh, obviously the paint is stellar the body work we did on it was the most surprising part for me because that was not our intention <laughs> our intention was to go in and I wanted to learn about air-cooled engines and then that came out of it <laughs> so it looks uh, it's a fun... so good <laughs> it does it's got the right look thank you um i like i said in that article is that it was very reminiscent of a 70s puffy jacket and that was all my husband's inspiration um except that's for the favorite, colors that's my favorite part of the whole build is that he wanted it to look like a puffy vest from the 70s. specifically from the so, 70s not the 80s puffies the 70s no, puffies 70s. Yeah, and it's, I mean, the colors are pretty reminiscent of that too, but a lot of that had to come from the fact that there's four of us in the family. We all had, a, we all wanted a piece of that action. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we're like, how do we do that? Um, so now it's still a project and now it's like <laughs> got a battery draw. And we've got to figure out where that's going to go from. And we're like, okay, um, but we really can't wait to get it in the dirt. So mm-hmm. that'll be fun. It's gonna be so And is that first trip gonna happen, Sedona? And do you guys have plans to do that or is it ready to do that? It is, um, we are getting better at doing trail fixes on it because <laughs> now that we've worked <laughs> on it so well that we probably would feel comfortable if we weren't just by ourselves with it. Um, 
but we don't have receipts in it. So as far as a family event, it won't be available for a while. So we're still looking at that and there's really no set plan or schedule for that one. And honestly, it's probably driven like 30 miles around town here and there and then back and then out again. So I'm ready to get it on the trail, but I think it's gonna be a little bit for that. Oh my God, I love yeah. this picture. <laughs> that picture is amazing. That's their son, Mason. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And is that the Frontier race truck in the background? <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, this Still is parked. the time of year where all of that's going on at once. So we've yeah. got, we're working on that and the bug. And of course they, you know, the top mm. trucks. So that's freaking Dude, cool. It looks so good. <laughs> and if anybody out there listening has a lean, has a line on a rear seat for this thing, let these guys know. Yes. Yeah. 1963 bug. We need a rear seat mm -hmm. on that. Mm -hmm. um, yep. So, and then we're for real, real trails where, you know, we'd like to beef up the roll cage on it a little bit. And, um, cause it's got a basic one on it, but we'd like to do the front end of it a little bit more and, um, the rear seats and a five point harness for all of us would be ideal for like extreme. <laughs> Safety is a thing. <laughs> yeah, definitely. a thing, especially in those, I mean, yeah, they're, they're adorable, but they're, yeah. They are what they are. They are what they are. Yeah. Exactly. The headliner too is perfect. Oh, that's also epic. That's so good. <laughs> so good. Yeah, that was again. See, like Doug had this vision, and I'm so glad he did because I wasn't in love with the initial appearance of it. Like, so, and I struggled to connect with that. I'm like, <laughs> and I, you know, I hate to sound shallow, but I, it really took me a minute to start to fall in love oh, with it. Oh, no, I almost fantastic. loved it better, like with the paint strip. But yeah, that's. Um, the, there are so Serape inspired Serape headliner. Is really good. So good. I love it. And then I love that we have like towel seat covers is what we did. We just, sure. Cause we're like towel seat covers. That's what we need in this. Oh, definitely. You know? yeah. I love that one of your other friends wants you to do it to their car. <laughs> oh, that's our niece too. And we're like, done. We'll do that for you. <laughs> what horrible Anytime. thing does she have? <laughs> oh, oh yeah. And she has like a little cord. Oh no. We're like, we'll make anything look like what you want. That's the, uh, years ago on driving while awesome. One of the hosts pointed out, like the thing he thought was luxury was like Mexican blanket luxury was like the thing. And that's for whatever reason that's stuck in my head after listening to that show, like five years ago, but that's what that headliner makes me think of. It's like, yes, it's awesome. It's so yeah. good. Yeah. I don't well, know we honestly, we but... looked into those. Oh yeah, exactly. Mexican yeah. blanket yeah. luxury, people. There you See, go. It's a real thing. It's a thing. Brian wasn't wrong. I think it was Brian. God, I hope it was Brian. Oh, <laughs> oh good. Yeah, and yeah, it was. So I, I, <laughs> our poor neighbors, but you know, <laughs> they were they were chips, and they really started to love watching yeah. it come along as they were like, oh, okay. Like I think they were surprised mm -hmm. by what it was becoming, and they're like, wait, you guys did all that. <laughs> In your side yard, that's great. <laughs> so I'm gonna um, say your lucky neighbors who actually got to see the, the metamorphosis of this thing. Yeah, well, and they really they like we had moved since, and um, I had sent some pictures as we put like the headliner into one of our neighbors because she was like, I've just been waiting for like updates on like the finished project. <laughs> and she's like, the fans. Yeah, but like this part, like oh man, getting the lines right and. I'm glad that Doug was there because I would be like, it's fine. It's fine. Like it can be a little. It looks so satisfying because they're uh, all yeah, like well, perfect. <laughs> yeah, and like the doors, like for instance, like this part, like it took a while to get the last little bit of that yellow in there because mm. the doors weren't hung right to start. So we're like, we have to wait till it's all done. And so like that's was finishing touches that we got to put mm. on it. Um, that's funny. That's so good. Oh, I, I feel like the last time we talked to Lynn, I snooped through your guys's posts and started to see the bug. And so to like, see it at this point mm -hmm. is even, it's even more fun. Oh yeah. It's yeah. Great. I, mean, Please, but I uh, know so many people who started projects during the pandemic and then just did not finish them. And so the fact that this was like one of those sort of pandemic family, you know, mm -hmm. joints and here it is like done. is like, Whoa, you guys actually <laughs> like did stuff. Right. <laughs> <laughs> unlike the rest of us that are like i'm gonna work out and lose 20 pounds and i've got all this time on my hands nope nope, nope. I, yeah yeah yep. i felt sorry for people who only had a single child during the pandemic. people are always like oh you have four kids it must have been so hard i was like no no, no. 
When one gets bored with one, you can move it to someone else. Mm -hmm. And for us, generally, it's another kid they're talking to. The people who only had a single child, that kid was always talking to an adult. Like Jeff. (laughs) Now, Jeff didn't complain at all. I didn't hear any complaint from Jeff. No, Jeff didn't complain, actually. I will admit, during all that, when I'm like basically teaching them at home, that was a complicated situation where I'm like, I wasn't as involved with some of the bug project as I'm like trucking away with online schooling but you know that's that was part of it right that was the whole thing is that all of us took on projects knowing that we had weird time like weird weird. Time. definitely <laughs> so weird definitely uh so, yeah, i'm gonna keep wrap up, keep... up the show well, before he turns into a pumpkin yes yes um yes. i was gonna say but if there are more bug updates please contribute yes. another universe article Oh, well, I would be happy to do that. <laughs> and Maybe when it actually hits the trail. I, I'm offering it on behalf guys, of Jeff, so. I don't know okay. where you guys shot it, but the pictures are fabulous. Like, I don't yeah. know, all those murals you found are just like, what? That's next level stuff, so mm-hmm. good. We got to drive it through downtown Gilbert, Arizona, and like with all those like Instagram-worthy places. And like, it was great. The nods, the like, we like stopped traffic because we really wanted pictures. <laughs> and they're like, oh, it's so cool. Like, yeah. Yeah. Going with it. Great. I was awesome. like, oh, thank you. <laughs> good on you. It's pretty good. You just stalked influencers for a couple of days and just went to the same spots as they did uh no we had actually gone and had <laughs> no. dinner out there and we're like that's where we're gonna take pictures <laughs> so, so great very cool yeah well sweet cool. uh for the listener they can rate and review this show on itunes uh i haven't checked it in a while i probably need to check to see how those are <laughs> really? uh-huh. i haven't checked uh you can like and subscribe on youtube uh if you're listening to the audio please go to universe and find the the articles titled the pandemic uh, the pandemic bud and Arizona family catches Baja fever. The pictures are awesome. Please or or uh, Sedona's Instagram is Sedona Bilson on Instagram, right? Linson, Lin- but yes, very close. Holy crap, reading is hard. And then <laughs> like, Douglas is Foz Cruiser. I think that's what it is. Yeah, yeah, Foz no, Cruiser. It. It's like Doug Squatch now, like soft. But I think it's still Foz Cruiser as his tag. Yeah. Yeah. It says, <laughs> my tab says Doug Squatch, but the, the title at the top still says Foss Cruiser. Yeah, so got it, okay. It's a very complicated, Douglas. We'll get back to you on that. Really I have notes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and Lynn is at Lynn underscore underscore Woodward. That's right. Yes. Still need to find that Lynn underscore Woodward and steal it from her. Either. At this Ultimate point, it's got to be beating. <laughs> it's got to be what? I said beating. So beating? Who knows? I'll give you five dollars, five fists. Five, five. Doing anything? One, two, with it. three, four, five. <laughs> <laughs> Kidding. Uh, that's internet bullying. That's like right. It's been ten weeks since she posted. Give it up already. Oh, has, it, has she post? Does she post? I don't uh, even know. She did. The holy crap! Who is this woman? I don't know. I mean, I now we're stalking her. Uh, there's there's <laughs> leopards and and defenders with no windshields like she's on a game reserve somewhere so there was a lady there was a lynn woodward who is like a, i think she's a wine she's a wine enthusiast or a wine reviewer and um she was using all of my articles on this thing and like attributing them to herself and like associating them to her twitter thing and i'm like i'm not even on twitter that's so Very, weird. Yeah. this lady's instagram looks like it's the same Interesting. Interesting. Big news. Yeah, not real. Double <laughs> underscores, people. Double underscores. I mean, yeah. you know. <laughs> Double two. I'm going to have to come up with something better than that. Yeah. And Great. then at KBB on yeah. Twitter. KBB and YouTube. Dot com. I, I'm not, you guys, I don't twit. I don't twit. I don't, I don't tweet. Whatever that is. I don't tweet it. Uh, I logged in today and immediately logged out. So I get it. There you go. Um, KBB YouTube channel, great way to see me. Um, the KBB website is a little more challenging to navigate, but KBB YouTube channel is awesome. Um, my Instagram page is really the best place to go see the antics that I'm up to when I'm not reviewing cars. Uh, so yeah. And if you want to follow the team for the rally, it's team.wild.grace for Instagram and Doug takes that over because we don't have our phones and he does an incredible job guys. <laughs> like, yeah, I, was, I don't know why he doesn't do it he all does. the time. But... He does like full narration. Most of the yeah. pictures really? I showed tonight were 
yeah uh race Just commentating yeah yeah. Yeah. yeah so very thorough uh Hooniverse is the Hooniverse on twitter the real Hooniverse on instagram and please go read uh sedona's uh baja bug post because it's fantastic uh if you're watching this on there you can literally go back and scroll down and it'll be there uh it'll definitely be linked in the, in the top of the post on Hooniverse. <laughs> like i'm not missing that opportunity uh ross is at no like no not like the one from friends but it doesn't matter he deleted off his phone and he forgot the passwords um and i'm at overlanding that <laughs> that's it well done. We we start really well. Landing the show is so hard. <laughs> hey, listen, you, the landing. And, you and SNL, you know, they can't finish the sketch. I, yeah. I'll take any time I can be compared to Saturday Night Live. Seriously. Right? Even exactly. if it's a negative, I think it's... I submitted okay. four tickets. I wonder if anything will come from that. Oh, that'll be For fun. For SNL tickets? Yeah, it's just open lottery. I don't know. Oh. We don't think about these things in Kansas City. Like That's I could call my friend know, Paul like or Jason. And, yeah. Right. <laughs> well, it's always a pleasure to talk to you guys. Thanks so much for having Likewise. us. And definitely stay tuned. I'm going to say around the first weekend in October. Okay. Uh, for our, what will no doubt be pretty, uh, pretty cool news. Okay.